What's going on guys? This is Matt and I recently made the switch from Intel to AMD for my personal computer. My old system, the PC you're looking at right now, has served me well for over the course of the past year as my main productivity and gaming machine, but for a number of reasons I decided to go to a new system based around AMD Ryzen 7. Sure, I made upgrades and changes to my old machine while I had it, but the core of the system never changed including the CPU, motherboard, and RAM. For the CPU, I had a 12 core ES Xeon that I got really cheap off of eBay. This CPU with 12 cores and 24 threads has an insane amount of multi-threaded performance, but with a max speed of 2.5 GHz it was definitely lacking in terms of single core performance. The CPU stayed mounted inside of the EVGA X99 Micro 2 motherboard, which was the cheapest X99 motherboard I could find at the time that fit my needs. Other specs included 16GB of DDR4 memory, a 500GB SSD from OCZ, a 550W power supply, and the Corsair Obsidian 350D Micro ATX Tower. The GPU I had the majority of the time was an EVGA GTX 1063GB, which I actually recently sold on eBay for $100 more than I paid for it brand new. Thanks Ethereum miners. Though the GTX 1063GB isn't that bad of a card in my opinion, the version I got had the worst 1060 cooler on the market, making the GPU run both hot and what was more of an annoyance to me, very loud. So what was I looking for by switching to Ryzen from the Xeon I was using before? Well even though switching to Ryzen meant I was losing 4 cores and 8 threads, I was actually staying around the same multi-threaded performance, but getting substantially better single threaded performance even at stock speeds with the Ryzen 7. 1700. So even though I didn't expect to see a performance gain in applications that were well optimized to take advantage of high core count CPUs, I did expect to see a big jump in less heavy multi-threaded applications like gaming. Small form factor PCs have also been piquing my interest lately so I decided I wanted to make a new system relatively compact. My new build is definitely slightly unorthodox and is very much still a work in progress, but here are the specs. So at the heart of my new AMD system is the Ryzen 7 1700 CPU. For those of you who don't know, the R7 1700 is a CPU with 8 cores and 16 threads. It's got a base clock of 3.2 GHz and can turbo up to 3.7 GHz on its own. Also, it's overclockable. I'm running it at stock speeds right now, but I may try overclocking it a little bit down the line when I've got better airflow and a better motherboard. Speaking of the motherboard, I went with the cheapest AM4 board on the market, which is the ASRock A3 20 DGS. I chose this board because I wanted to see what a low-end AM4 motherboard was like and wanted to test it out to see if you really need to get an expensive AM4 board or if one like this will work fine. It retails for around $52 but I actually found a promo that allowed me to get it for around $5 off which sub $50 for an AM4 board is about as cheap as you can get. Other than not being able to overclock, this board actually is providing a lot of features and value for your money. With all the necessities of a modern motherboard like a 16x PCIe slot and front panel USB 3 headers, but also some nice features like an Ultra M.2 slot. Sure, I.O. is limited, but for the average person I think this board could work fine. For RAM, I went with 16GB of Galax Hall of Fame RAM at 3200MHz. Ryzen loves fast RAM and it has a big impact on performance, so if you're building a Ryzen based system, please try and get a RAM kit that's relatively fast. Though this does take up all of the RAM slots, 16GB is enough for me editing 1080p footage, and if I decide to take Take the jump to 4K editing, I'll probably be wanting to upgrade my motherboard to not only something with 4 RAM slots for double the RAM, but also an overclocking chipset. For internal storage, I've got a 500GB OCZ VX500 SSD, and I offload extra files and footage to an external drive. This is the Johnsbo C2, a $60 PC case you can only order directly from China. It's a full anodized aluminum chassis that supports micro ATX motherboards, but the best part is it's under 12 liters, making it a fraction of the size of my old system. The one biggest problem with the case is airflow. I've got one Cooler Master Master Fan Pro RGB in the bottom of the case. The Master Fan Pros are Cooler Master's new RGB fans that come in three different varieties depending on the application. I'm not the biggest fan of RGB, but putting the fan on the bottom gives my PC an underglow look that I quite like. The only problem is that this is the only active case fan, meaning air either has to exit through vents in the back of the PC or be drawn out through the power supply, which isn't ideal. My solution to this, and let me know what you think of it, is to cut a fan hole in the top of the case and install a fan inside of the case with a fan grill over it. This should increase airflow 
slow and lower temp substantially, but it is going to affect the otherwise very clean aesthetic. This spot is the only real place to put a fan and 80mm is the largest I can fit. Again, let me know if you think I should do this mod in the comment section down below. For the power supply, I have the Corsair SF450, which is a fully modular, 80 plus gold, small form factor power supply with a max output of 450 watts. I picked this up for around $60 on a Fry promo deal. Though my case technically supports full ATX power supplies, having an SFX modular unit gives me more room for airflow and to work in. My favorite feature on this power supply is that the fan doesn't even spin up until it's at 50% load, which in its current configuration never even happens because keep in mind, even though the 1700 is an 8 core CPU, at stock speeds it only has a TDP of 65 watts, which is incredibly low. Finally, let's talk about the GPU. I sold my 1060 and planned on sticking out the GPU price apocalypse with an RX 460, but quickly realized it wasn't going to fit. So for the next few weeks, I'm going to be using a GTX 750 Ti as my main GPU, which actually isn't horrible for my use case. The games I play most are Overwatch, CSGO, Rocket League, and I've also been playing South Park Stick of Truth lately, all of which run fine at 1080p on this card. I plan on getting a 1066GB with a better ITX style cooler, or maybe even a 1070 if I can find a really good deal on one. Also, I think I'll eventually be going ITX, but the case I want isn't out yet, and I want to wait to buy an ITX AM4 board, as at the current time there are so few versions out, and they're so new it's hard to tell which one is the best to get. So this video isn't really going to have any benchmarks just because the system isn't in its final form. I'll be running a lot of benchmarks in part 2 when I do the airflow mod and add a better GPU. If there are certain benchmarks or games you want to see me test in part 2, let me know in the comment section down below. So my Switch to Ryzen has given me similar multi-threaded performance, but much better single-threaded performance and allowed me to have a much more power efficient and compact system. Overall, when the system is complete, it's going to be a really great system for gaming, editing, and and everything in between. And just as a disclaimer, I'm not a fanboy for AMD, Intel, or any company for that matter. I try to give my money to the company providing the most value for my dollar, which right now is AMD. Now that Threadripper and Ryzen 3 have been announced, it's starting to look like the future of the CPU market is looking very red. But with that being said, all Intel has to do is lower their prices and they will be able to be competitive again. So enough rambling on. So far, I'm very happy with my Switch and can't wait to complete my build. So yeah guys, I think this wraps this video up. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up, as well as consider subscribing for more PC and tech related content in the future. And as always, this is Matt from Tech by Matt, signing out.